I'm Shiva. I'm Sandy. And this is Our, Our Relaxing, Relaxing Hobby. Our first, uh, our first request, actually, right? Yeah, this is our very first request. So before we get started, I'd like to let the, our viewers know that if you ever have any questions or an idea for an episode or something you want to see us do, you know, keep it legal. Um, <laughs> please. Yeah, yeah, please. Private messages. <laughs> But if you have an idea for a show or want us to talk about something or want to know something about, you know, further about what we've done or yeah. not sure what the heck we were, we were doing in another episode or saw something, whatever. Uh, if you need more clarification, let us know. Yes, please leave a comment. Yes, yeah, a comment. We do read them. We well, actually do read them. And we even had one guy actually catch me with a mistake. So if you ever do that, by all means, uh, correct me. I was... Um, having a brain fart and I said that the real fish were from the Amazon when I meant Congo. So <laughs> Amazon, Congo, see that's a whole history. That's I a whole know. Geology. I'm a joke. I'm a, hi I'm a history person. I'm not yeah. a joke. Yeah. I'm not a joke. I'm not anything. Yeah. I'm just yeah. here. Well, the, the screwed up thing was is I knew that they were from the Congo. It's just so it had the camera. I, was sitting here, I couldn't even remember what a heater was. I'm sitting here oh. going, it's a temperature thing because <laughs> the, the real fish are from the Amazon. I was just Whoa, bad day for me. So. <laughs> I've, I've done that. Yeah. But yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, aeration. aeration today. Yes. Okay. Uh, we and we're going to bring in our guest speaker, Garrett. Mm -hmm. And he's going to give you a little bit more technical on that. Yeah, but basically, uh, the question was is asking us to talk about aeration. And it's a really important subject. Extremely important. Aeration is extremely And people, a lot of people don't realize it. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah. it's extremely important. Uh, they do need the air. Mm -hmm. in the, you know. Oh, gosh. I've played video games, like little fish video games, where they have bubbles as being a decoration. Yeah. The bubbles are not decoration. No, they're not decoration. The bubbles are required aeration. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's good to have a lot. I mean, I have a whole bubble wand. I have a little 20-gallon tank, and I have this big bubble wand in the back that has a whole row of bubbles to keep mine well aerated. Yeah. Um, That's I, not the same as filtration. Yeah. Aeration is just the bubbles. Yeah. Now sometimes you can get a combo like right. uh, like with my fountains in my uh, in my big tanks. It's the filter and it's attached to a wand that, a wand that sprays, sprays water. Sprays water, out. which makes out makes again aeration. So right. Little, yeah. So There's you, different ways to do it. You can do that, and then there's uh, there's ones that I hate. There's filters that stick on the side that like you have in the small tank. Right. That's what I have. Yeah. That dump the water back in. Yes. And that helps. Although that I don't it's think not, helps it's, as well. It's not, it's not as much. I mean, it does help a little. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to have a big bubble wand like me, but I like the bubbles. I like the way they look. Yeah. Um, but it, even if you have something, if you're in a small decoration tank of 10, 20 like mine, um, they have the cute little ones. They have like little men that swim and they have little chests that open. I mean, yeah. anything. You need aeration. Right. And we'll now, let Garrett go to the more real technical reasons right. why. We're just going to talk about how we can, how you get aeration in and then Garrett will talk to you about, you know, all the science behind it. Now, in order to get aeration in your, into your tank, you're going to need something that pumps air. Uh, that's your time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, we're going to ignore Sandy for a minute. <laughs> most, I have no life. Mm -hmm. Most people get uh, little little air pumps that yeah, sit you, right you next to the Yeah, you buy an air pump, and, it, and it, it actually gives different sizes you can mm -hmm. have. They're, they're specifically designed for the size tank. I mean, they have 10s, 20s, 30s. Right, or if you have multiple tanks like we do, you can get ones that have multiple noses. Like, I've got some right. that have four, and it's a high power pump, so it can spread air, you know, along the Right, long, and there's also, area. there's also, you can also buy the, um, I had at one point, I had two tanks, and I had one pump that was larger, air pump, and it had, a, you, had you could buy splitters. Mm -hmm. That actually, in the, for the hoses, and you could actually run it to different, or you can do two, two different sides of your tank. Like, at one point, I had two little cute things, in a 30 gallon tank on each side just to be cute right so i mean they have splitters as well so but i mean you know yeah. you want to at least have one that's as, as, how do i say it you want to have one that's at least as powerful as your how many gallons you have in your tank yeah like there's a one that's for a 10 gallon tank specifically you want to have at least that one or a stronger one right go stronger stronger than weaker yeah stronger is always better than weaker mm -hmm. uh, because they need the air has to go through the entire t the entire water body of water yeah Basically, you need to be able to push the air up through however long your hose is and into your 
into whatever device you're using to dissipate it into the water. Right. If you're using a wand, that air has to go through the entire right. wand. I usually use the little ball things. It doesn't right. need as, quite as much, especially since I'm running four, four uh, hoses off the right. top. Right. But you use like the wands. I use the wand and I have a 20 gallon tank and my, and my pump is a 50. Mm -hmm. And it, it creates enough aeration, I think. Right. You know, plenty of aeration for my tank. Right. Now with uh, ponds, which is, if aeration becomes even more important because you're dealing right. with much larger fish. Uh, the way to get aeration to them, the most preferable and the one people like the most is waterfalls. Right. Which we have talked about waterfalls before, but they're not just for looks. They're getting that water in there and breaking up the water surface and, and creating and aerating, air. aerating right. the uh, water. Um, other people use fountains, like the bell fountains. Right. That I've, you know, I've got for each of those bell fountains, sprayer fountains. If you have a really large pond, anything that breaks the surface water and gets water, you know, mixed up in there, that's what you need. Um, let's see. Another thing that I've been doing for mine lately, because my fish are getting bigger and we're about to make a bigger pond. But until we can get around to digging a bigger pond, um, since I have a small um, baby tank hanging out like right next to my koi pond. I have it on a double on a double uh, air pump and I just threw a big old large disc for a bubbler into my pond along with it. So right. my fish are loving that. They love playing in the bubbles. Right. It's just giving them a little extra aeration yeah. aeration since I've got like twenty six koi in one pond that really I shouldn't have that many in there except as long as there's enough aeration and filtration they're okay. Right. But I always have to watch the aeration. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah, the, the koi pond I have right now has four waterfalls going on, plus it has an extra waterfall that you don't see, and that's coming straight from the black box into a uh, holding area where the pumps then bring it into another waterfall. So I've got double aeration going on one side because I have so many fish in one pond. Right. right. So yeah, It is extremely important. Yeah. Now plants play a role in aeration too, and that's right. where we're going to get the earth involved because we have um, outdoor ponds as well. They have some waterfalls, but they have a lot of plants in them that's helping. So right. you can get away with just one waterfall in the, that 800 gallon pond out there right. because of all the plants. So we're going to pull Gareth in to talk about the, yeah. the science behind this. Alright, all right, so I'm told we had a request to talk about uh, tank aeration today. Alright, a little bit about aeration. Um, well, while uh, water is comprised of uh, hydrogen and oxygen, it is important to understand that the oxygen that makes up the water isn't actually the oxygen that fish breathe, because, well, it's too busy being water. The oxygen that fish actually breathe is the same atmospheric oxygen that we do, just that it's dissolved into the water, you know, kind of, kind of the same way that, uh, you know, sugar or salt would dissolve in there. Uh, one of the most important things to, under to understand is uh, uh, the biggest thing that plays a part in this is the surface area of your aquarium. Um, that's why, you know, with a, uh, between like a 20 gallon long and a 20 gallon high tank, and while they both hold the same volume of water, the 20 long is actually going to have an easier time getting more oxygen in there because you know, it's the length by the width that creates the surface area. With the high tank, you have less length, so uh, so you have a smaller surface area. Uh, the 20 long also has the advantage in that it's shallower, so it's easier for that oxygen to make it to the bottom of uh, to the bottom of the tank. Uh, some signs that you're not getting enough oxygenation in your tank is if your fish are always hanging out at the surface and especially if they look like they're gasping. That's usually a good sign that, uh, that there's not enough oxygen going through all of the water. So they're go going to go to where most of the oxygen is. Or if they hang out near your filter output because that's an, another spot where you get a lot more oxygenation because one of the things that helps to, you know, one of the things that really helps to uh, increase the gas transfer between the water, uh, between the water and the surrounding air is when the filter spills over, breaking the surface tension there. Now, a lot of aquariums can get by with nothing more than a simple hang on back filter just spilling water in there because you have the additional surface area of the 
of the water spilling out, and you have the surface tension being broken at that spot. That said, it never hurts to throw in an air stem. Um, you don't necessarily need something cranking a whole lot of air through it, but uh, each one of those bubbles, that's a little more surface area, and uh, you know when the bubbles come to the top and break, that breaks the surface tension of the water, also facilitating gas transfer. Now, another thing that helps, although to a very slight degree, is having plants in your aquarium, but because as plants photosynthesize, they, they take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen themselves. Now this only happens while you have uh, while you have lights on, and and uh, a lot of times your aquarium lights aren't going to be the best to provide a lot of photosynthesis. But you know, having uh, having healthy plants in your aquarium will help to uh, will help to provide some oxygenation. Yeah, it's. Not a, it's not a replacement for having, actually having enough surface area or you know, having the, uh, the surface tension broken in order to make the gas transfer easier, but it does provide some. Uh, other things to keep in mind uh, are the species of fish you're keeping because goldfish especially are very are very efficient breathers. Uh, they, uh, their gills are actually able to uh, are actually able to extract 80% of the oxygen from the water that they're breathing. You know, compared to us humans, who in the best circumstances, or we're uh, we're able to breathe about 25 of the 25% of the oxygen that we're taking in with each breath. But also, uh, whether or not your aquarium is heated is a big deal also because as the water gets warmer, it is, it is less able to keep more oxygen dissolved in there. So if you're dealing with some, you know, some kinds of South American fish where you're getting up close to 80 degrees in your aquarium, you're definitely going to want to have, you know, you're definitely going to want to have, you know, some supplementary aeration in there. But with cold water fish, uh, which would like goldfish, koi, minnows, it's not as, it's not usually as big of an issue. Now, in an outside pond like uh, like the one that uh, I assumed she was going to put up on uh, put up on the screen here, um, you'll notice that uh, uh, this particular pond is about five feet deep and maybe about eight by six feet wide. And one of the things that, uh, that helps to you know, maintain constant oxygenation throughout the pond is that in addition to being heavily planted, uh, we, have, uh, we have the pumps uh, for the waterfalls near the bottom. It's pulling the less oxygenated water from the bottom up, up to the uh, waterfall. And uh, that is, uh, that's gonna be your first point of, it, of uh, aeration as that uh, water streams out, as soon as it hits the air, it's picking up oxygen from the uh, from the atmosphere.